So, I want to talk a little bit about religion, sacraments, uh, shamanism, and whatever, but I guess I usually never talk about religion because I don't want to offend anybody, or like, you know, I'm not attacking or putting anybody down or anyone's beliefs down. I'm just trying to talk about these topics. Now, I don't know if y'all are going to be able to see me because the sun is like directly behind me, but... I want to talk about how, like, so I was thinking about this, um, years ago, like years ago when I was doing research, when I made my documentary, um, Blue Lotus on the Blue Water Lily, I came across this thing where they were talking about the religion of Isis. So Isis, or Isis, but pronunciation is technically Isis, is this Egyptian goddess, and... There was this, like, religion of Isis that used to exist, and they would have this blue lotus sacrament, okay? And their sacrament was, like, this blue lotus wine of some sort. Like, it's, it's complex, complicated, a little more to it than that, but, like, the basic of it is that they had this blue lotus sacrament, this wine sacrament of blue lotus. And I thought it was a little funny a coincidence maybe um or synchronicity or something that the sacrament of the christians is wine technically like you know the, you get the daily bread and take a sip of the wine you know jesus's blood quote unquote but um and like i said i'm not trying to put anything down it's just because i practice modern day shamanism I use these plants and herbs and psychedelics and things as sacraments. Like, I don't necessarily always look at it like I'm taking my sacrament and, you know, like, no. It's just everything I do is on this spiritual thing. Like, I'm going on this hike and it's on some spiritual shit. Like, I've, I'm feeling connected to the planet and to the earth. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I made this video. I wanted to go on this hike instead of uh just make it inside but like i use these things as sacraments so when they say that wine is their sacrament it's a really i don't know the word i don't want to say shitty thing but like it's not that it, it's just it's just sad to me because i feel like if wine was their sacrament it would be a better sacrament if they added some blue lotus into it it would be a little more spiritual like i don't know i think maybe this is what's missing in religion is the real molecules like they say that christianity originally was like a pagan thing like originally they talk about how like they would Something about, what was it, Belladonna, or Henbane, or Datura um, was involved, then the red and white mushroom was involved, Amanita muscaria, and some other things were involved, until the church started demonizing plants, and like started disconnecting from these, these I guess you could say original sacraments, and then, you know, as time went on, the catholic church spread out and all this other stuff the one thing i really do have against religion is the fact that we forgot what they had to do to make it so there is as many christians as they are like there's when the you know europeans came to america they um i say they forced this on them they say they were just trying to t preach the word of god to to these people and they call them these savages but the truth is that the christians back then trying to force someone to believe their religion m are more acting like savages than people who are connected to the land like there's many different forms of religion spiritual practices sacraments they all are like trying to do the same type thing though so 
What I prefer is, like, have everything exist. Like, Christianity, I'm not saying we should get rid of it. We shouldn't get rid of religion just because I practice shamanism and I take psychedelics and, you know, use these sacraments and I use these plants and herbs and I go on plant dieters with them. Like, because this is where it seems like these ideas came from. Because, like, shamanism, like, existed really before anything. Like, practices of, like, just humans taking plants to connect and making ceremonies and looking at Mother Nature, like... You're connected to it. Like, that was kind of the beginning stages. And then plant dietas. Like, if you look at shamanism, there's plant dietas. And you could say that they call their sacraments master plants. But they will go on, like, journeys with their master plants to get to know their master plants. But... In most religions, it's just like you go to church, you drink the wine, you sit there, you listen to the word of God, and you do this thing. And really, the most connected thing in church is people connecting with each other. Like, as you're in church together, you're doing this thing together, and it's like this connective thing together. Now, you get the same thing if you do psychedelics with people. You get this connected thing together. Um, but regardless... These are all, these are practices that we can do to connect to what we actually are. Or you could say God, but like, we are God. Like, God isn't just some man in the sky. God is also the trees, the birds, the planet, the animals, the monkeys, and the naked monkeys, as we call ourselves homo sapiens. But like, it's all this thing. It's all one. So, in my spiritual practice, that's what you know, I've come across is it's all one. It's, it's that we, our soul is part of something that is much greater than our body. And like, that's just it. But even in religions, religions will tell you a similar thing. That your soul, your spirit is, comes from a place like that you came before here and that you will go after here like almost all of these religions are saying the same type thing they're all just saying it in different ways and um people argue and whatever and i'm not here to argue i'm not going to sit here and say shamanism is right smoke dmt take ayahuasca take mushrooms silent darkness close your eyes travel into the tryptamine world meet this like yeah you can do that or you can just go to church and yeah, you're going to get completely different things because out of what I've noticed with shamanism, it's a whole entire practice. Religion is something that you can do without practicing. You can't do shamanism without practicing. Like whether it was old shamanism or the new modern day shamanism, you can't do it without doing it. Like, I had to go on the plant dietas. I had to get to know the plants. I had to learn how to work with them. I had to then work on myself, heal my own mental health, fix myself. Like, on this journey, did this thing, used the psychedelics, learned how to travel with the psychedelics, learned how to meditate with the psychedelics, learned how to just, I don't know, how to let, let go and let them take me. And, like, all these things, it was me on the journey practicing this thing. That's why I would say I'm on the shamanic journey. Because it's a journey compared to going to church. And I guess religion can be considered a journey as you're learning. You know, if you're a new Christian and you just started reading the Bible, you just started learning about Jesus and all that. But it just seems that religion religion has this uh, thing that like stops people from going any further. Like, because I grew up in a Catholic family... I was in a Catholic school from pre-K to third grade. So, like, I knew about Jesus' life before I knew about anything else. Um, but then when I got older, I learned things about Jesus and learned things that they didn't teach me in church or that they wouldn't, even if it was true. Like, why did Jesus get hung on the cross? What was the anointment oil? How did he figure out how to make the anointment oil? All this, like, all these things we kind of it goes over our heads because they never really mention it it's almost like they intentionally tried to erase the original sacraments because it's like 
the sacrament that you could say Jesus was using was the anointment oil, in a sense, anointing people. And like, you know, they say his 12 disciples were the 12 people that he anointed with the anointment oil that he illegally learned how to make. Like, there's more to the stories than we, than just simple things. And it's also, there's more to the magical parts than meets the eye. I think psychedelics have a lot to do with these things, you know, and when they talk about how, you know, the Catholic religion, like, originally was some pagan thing, and originally was, like, this thing where they would use, like, things like henbane, or, like, belladonna, uh, other, other plants or whatever, but it, you start realizing, if you know what these things do, frankincense and myrrh, like, they have effects as well, like... <clears throat> The way I look at frankincense, myrrh, and gold, I look at it like frankincense and myrrh, and I look at the gold as in, well, yeah, maybe they gave him real gold because he needed some money, or maybe they gave him monoatomic gold for some spiritual usage. Who knows? But what I know is that... <laughs> All those geese. But what I know is it's like, okay, religion can come and go, but shamanism is here to stay. Like, shamanism was originally an Asian thing that became a Native American thing because the Asians who originally came to the Americas eventually became the Native Americans. And as shamanism spread out through the Americas, shamanism became many different things. Like, the shamans in North America practice and, like, use completely different plants than the shamans in South America... But yet, it's all shamanism. It's all this connection of, like, using the plants to heal yourself, using the plants to help yourself, like, re like connecting with what's going on and just being connected to the land and to yourself. And, like, I don't know how to explain it, but religion, it's like religion wants to tell you they know, like, what's going to happen after we die. And, like, I say the same type of shit, so I don't... I'll never say I know what happens when you die. But I'm saying that I truly believe that DMT is what happens when you die. Like, I would smoke DMT. I would travel into this world and sometimes leave my body completely. And, like, it's like the spaces you travel to in DMT space, you're like, yeah, this is it. Like, it's almost like you get deja vu and you remember... Yeah, you were there before you were here on Earth type shit. And it's very hard to grasp and very complex. But like, ayahuasca, DMT, mushrooms, I think they all take you to the same type world. It's this actual true spiritual experience. Like, the true spiritual experience is the breakthrough on psychedelics. It doesn't matter if it's a breakthrough with DMT or with mushrooms or with ayahuasca. Shit, even with Hawaiian bibuidro seeds or like extremely high doses of San Pedro or something like peyote. Like the real spiritual experience is that experience where you transcend your own body. But I think we just got caught up in like being scared of it. So like... Religions are here, and I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon, but I do think shamanism is making a comeback because psychedelics are starting to get more popular. But because in the 1960s, it was like LSD got popular. But LSD is the least spiritual out of all the psychedelics. So, like, now that what made psychedelics popular in the 2000s was ayahuasca. And because ayahuasca and DMT are the things that are making psychedelics popular today, people who are using psychedelics today have a completely different view of them than the people that were using LSD. And I mean, I guess mushrooms are pretty popular now too. Like, this year, 2023, I've seen that mushrooms have been a really popular thing this year. I mean, that's great. But um, I'm just saying that even if somebody's using psychedelics without any knowledge of the spiritual aspect of it, they can feel the spiritual aspect of it. You know, um, but whether it's using psychedelics, like modern shamanism, or whether it's religion, 
Um, and see, I only talked about Christianity, really, because I don't really know much. Like, I, I've researched Islam um, and, and, like, the whole Muslim thing. I've researched, um, you know, Buddhism and Hinduism and all that. And they're really interesting. It's just I grew up with being a Catholic, so I feel like I know more about that. I get it because I was brought up into it. But then once I used psychedelics... I realized that was like DMT. The first time I did DMT, like I said to myself, DMT made me believe in God more than I ever have before. I feel like I believe in God more. I feel like I fight for God more. Like, I feel like I'm just God's soldier here to just do my thing. But if it wasn't for DMT and psychedelics, I wouldn't feel that way. Like, I literally feel like... I don't know how to explain it. I just feel this connection to God that I couldn't explain, that, that I just didn't have before, and I just can't explain, and it's thanks to psychedelics. And then doing the research and understanding that psychedelics are this thing that gives you this real spiritual experience, but you can use other plants that might not be psychedelics, but these other plants can teach you things too, to help heal you, to help guide you, to help whatever... And, like, you can gain relationships with plants and gain relationships with these things that help you in your life. Just like you can gain relationships with people that help you in your life. It's a very similar thing. This life thing is a giant spiritual experience. Like, this whole life thing is one giant psychedelic experience. So, like, when somebody becomes religious, it's like, it becomes a lifestyle that... Like, it's not just they go to church on Sunday, and then during the week, they, they're, I don't know, fucking up and whatever. Like, I mean, sometimes. But, like, people who take their religion seriously, it's a lifestyle to them. You can take psychedelics and not take it seriously, just like you can go to church and not take it seriously. Or you can go to church and take it seriously and work on things even when you're not in church. Just like you could take psychedelics and take it and work on it and take it seriously and work on things even when you're not on the psychedelics. Like, you can still work on yourself. You can still work on connecting. You can still work on growing. You can still work on being. Like, you can still work on your connection with God. You can still work on your connection with the planet. You can still work on your connection in general. And, you know, and I've seen it with people who practice religion. This is why I have nothing against it, because I've seen people who were not religious then become religious, and it starts to better their life. This isn't really about, like, some ego trip of, I know the truth and you don't, or you know the truth and they're wrong. And, like, no, it doesn't matter... It doesn't really matter if I'm right and yeah, DMT is what happens when we die or if the Christians are right and heaven and hell exist and, you know, there's some about 40 virgins and some other shit, like whatever. It doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong. What matters is, are these practices actually helping your life? Are they helping you as a person feel more connected, feel just more alive, feel just, I, I don't know, because I think that's really the point. You know, these religions will help connect you to the other people in the religions. See, I use psychedelics, but it's helped me connect to other people who use psychedelics in that similar way. So, like, there's community, like, it helps this, there's a community aspect of it. Um, there's a connection aspect to it. There's a learning aspect to it. There's a whatever. Like, there's this, it's a whole practice, you know, this psychedelic spiritual shamanic journey. But also, it's a whole practice if you're, in religion and you're taking it seriously you'll gain friends that are religious and you guys can talk about it together and you know learn together just like i did with my psychedelic homies that i talked to and we talk about it together like you know like you can do you can kind of do what works for you and that's really what it is it's not that one way is right or one way is wrong and i mean yeah maybe one way might be wrong but is it really wrong if it helped you become a better version of you? Like, does it really matter if you actually know what happens when you die? No matter what, we're going to die anyways. So it doesn't really matter if, if we were right or if we were wrong. What really matters, I feel like, is did you become the person you were meant to be? Do you like who you are as a person? And if you do, then it's not going to matter if you were wrong about what happens when you die. Like, and I think that's the point of 
shamanism or spirituality or religion or like these practices, these different things you can do to help you become a better version of you before you die.